Hello everyone. In a time before the reign of dragons, eons before the age of mortal races that would later call it home, a planet had formed around a slumbering world soul in a far corner of the great dark beyond. We would later know both the sleeping titan and the planet that formed around her as Azeroth. And at the beginning, this primordial planet was the playground of the elements that called it home. These elements all had their lords, the most powerful of their kinds. There was Alakir, the cunning lord of winds, Ragnaros, the brash lord of fire, Ferrazane, the reclusive stone mother, and Neptulon, the wise lord of water. And he's also the topic of today's video. These four elements were originally five, but a growing titan soul is a hungry child to feed, and so vast was this slumbering titan that it drew in and consumed the fifth of these elements, the element of spirits. Without this fifth element to keep balance, the others grew wild and chaotic, waging wars against one another to claim the planet as their own, though in truth, they each cared more for the sheer chaos and destruction they wrought against each other than they did for any grand plans. All they wished was for this cycle of unmitigated carnage to carry on forever, for Azeroth to remain their war zone. The elements wish that Azeroth would remain their own personal battleground. It would be granted for untold millennia. That is, until it literally came crashing down in the form of the old gods. These towering monstrosities plummeted from the great dark beyond sent on by the Void Lords to find and corrupt a nascent titan spirits that grew in some of the many different planets. The arrival of the old gods would not go unnoticed, and the elemental lords were not happy these grotesque beings had gatecrashed their party. Not only had these unwanted squatters ruined their millennia of wanton chaos, but they brought with them their very own guests. Faceless ones and the insectoid Akir slivered to life from the organic matter that oozed from the grotesque bodies of the old gods, and there seemed to be no end to their swarms. It became clear that the four elemental lords would have to take drastic action. Though it was unprecedented, the elemental lords came to a truce. For the first time, the lords of fire air, water and earth would work together rather than against each other. The enemy of their enemy was their friend after all, and the sooner the elements got rid of their unwelcome guests, the sooner they could go back to the scheduled chaos. The lords of air and fire, Alakir and Ragnaros, would unleash ruthless burning cyclones at their foes, while the stone mother Ferrazane and the lord of water Neptulon, they'd found their own effective tactics. Ferrazane would curl the enemy by raising jagged mountains of rock around them. Then Neptulon would crush them with the power of the seas. Despite the best efforts of the four elemental lords, they could not defeat the old gods and became enslaved. We don't know what the old gods did with the elemental pets, but without the interference, these vile servants of the void lords draped Azeroth in a veil of eternal twilight, bringing about the reign of the Black Empire. As suddenly as the Black Empire rose, so too would eventually fall. And when the Pantheon was informed of the slumbering soul of one of their kin, they were determined to save it from the vile corruption which threatened it. The Titans sent their keepers down to cleanse the planet, their assault both swift and fierce. The old gods seethed and called upon their greatest of lieutenants, the elemental lords, to defend them. The keepers split into groups to deal with the threat, and each group advanced upon one of the four lords. As Neptulon rushed to join the fray, he was waylaid by Loken and Mimiron. His forces outmaneuvered at every turn, until eventually Loken froze and shattered Neptulon's water elementals, as Mimiron created enchanted bonds to imprison the Tide Hunter. The elemental lords were bound to Azeroth, and so killing them here would serve no end, for nobody really, not even the keepers could get rid of something as primal and essential as the elements. The land they walked upon, the air the mortal races would breathe, the fire which would light the dark, and the water which would nourish all living things, they would all hear, all ruled over by the four lords. They could not kill the elements, because they were as much part of Azeroth as the world soul was. The best the keepers could do was incapacitate them. Ra and Helia, they formed a pocket dimension that they called the Elemental Plane, and it was here that they imprisoned each lord within their own domain. Neptulon had been freed from his servitude to the old gods, only to be imprisoned once more in his new realm, the Abyssal Ma. Keeper Ra sealed the domains of the elements and hid the key inside his shield, the High Keeper's Wards. Contained within their own realms, the Elemental Lords could no longer harm Azeroth, 
but it did nothing to cool their tempers. They still constantly fought between themselves. Ragnaros even took this one step further and went as far as warring with the elemental plane of air for 5,000 years, culminating in him killing the prince of air, namely Thunderan, and consuming most of his essence. Ragnaros would eventually come to be summoned onto Azeroth again by some overzealous Dark Island Wars. And as he was rampaging on the surface, we don't really know what the other elemental lords were doing or if they were simply still imprisoned. Regardless of where he was, Neptulon still ruled the waves and commanded all water elementals, even those who remained behind on Azeroth. So we do see his influence crop up. One example of Neptulon's influence is regarding the Gurubashi trolls. There is a book called The Stone of the Tides, which discusses how this tribe of trolls came across a peculiar artifact of the same name. Various members of the tribe could wield the artifact to control water, and it's been suggested that this immense power, it could be a physical manifestation of the powers possessed by the Tide Hunter himself. Regardless of the truth in that story, Neptulon would play a huge part in the tribe's history. There's a tablet titled The Fall of the Gurubashi that tells us how Neptulon sent mighty krakens to raise the city of Ilalai. If the previous tale is true and the Stone of Tides was indeed his artifacts, this could have been a reason for Neptulon wanted to punish the trolls for their arrogance. But if not, they must have done something to call the wrath of the usually calm-natured Tide Hunter upon them. The Krakens send huge waves of water to fall upon the jungle, getting as high up as the mountains before they retreated again, leaving nothing in their wake, and the city of Ilalai lost beneath the waves. But the fate of the Gurubashi is not the only instance of Neptulon's ability to command his forces, even while he was still presumably imprisoned. Bold adventurers, they worked alongside some of his water elementals, a faction called the Hydraxian Waterlords, to rip Blackrock Mountain off Ragnaros and send them back to the Firelands, his domain within the elemental plane. It's doubtful that the motivation for helping us send Ragnaros back to his prison, that it was due to compassion for the mortal races, and judging by the usual animosity, it's more like Neptulon was taking the opportunity to inconvenience Ragnaros whilst it presented itself. Duke Hydrax himself tells us that the Waterlords wage war against any lesser elements, and they wouldn't pass up an opportunity to loosen the foothold of these lesser elements and send them back to the elemental plane. And then the first time that we see the Tide Hunter in person, that would happen after Deathwing erupted from Deepholm and the elemental plane collided with Azeroth. Shortly before this, when Deathwing was being tended to in Deepholm, the old gods had called out their earlier servants, the elemental lords, two of them, Alakir and Ragnaros. They relished the thought of war and the promise of free reign on Azeroth. They readily allied themselves with Deathwing, but Fedazane and Neptulon refused. The lords of earth and water were generally less hot-headed than the lords of air and fire, and their long imprisonment, it had given both Fedazane and Neptulon the chance to break free from their shackles of the old gods. They refused to be enslaved once again, and would rather remain imprisoned in the domains than to walk in Azeroth as slave as the old gods once more. Now when Deathwing erupted from deep home, the domains of the elemental lords became accessible, and this decision not to ally with Deathwing, it would result in the Naga trying to enter the throne of tides and overthrow Neptulon's reign. Neptulon's minions are growing desperate. We must hurry. This is it, the entrance to Neptulon's realm. <laughs> Nice job. And her honor guard. Fight for your lives! Come, children of the sorrow. At last we lay claim to the plain of water. Go, my Naga. Welcome the mighty tide hunter to Azeroth. You and your scaly worms are no match for me. You've reached too far, servant. You shall suffer greatly for your trespass. To me, my minions! Strike now! Last. 
hidden itself had ordered the Shara to overthrow the Tidehunter. But this was more than a punishment for Neptalon's defiance. Nazov, he wanted the power to control the world seas so that they could cut off all forms of sea travel in an effort to splinter the world's nations into isolated enclaves. It would seem absurd that the Naga could even hope to compete against an elemental lord. But they were succeeding, and when we enter the Throne of Tides, we can see why. They have been the colossal Ozumat, patriarch of all Kraken to their will, and we need to kill the Naga forces occupying Neptulon's domain and protect the Tide Lord himself as he cleanses the waters. You may yet regret your presence here. As I purify these waters, the servants of filth will surely be stirred. Beware, the beast has returned. It must not pollute my waters. Oh, their filthiness stains me. My waters are cleansed. Drink in their power. Behold the power of pure water. Just as it seems victory is within our grasp, Ozumat picks Neptulon up and carries him away. We don't know where he went or what happened next, but this would be the last that we'll hear of the Lord of Tides. Neptulon can't be incapacitated merely by getting kidnapped by a giant squid, and he does escape at one point. We don't really know how he did it, and it seems Blizzard might not know the answer to this either, with Chris Madsen saying that it's a damn mess, that is what it is. I do recall a period of time where people were asking on Twitter, like what is going on with Neptulon, to which Blizzard tweeted out that he was able to liberate himself. This got quite a lot of people upset. They wanted to see the story play out in game. They wanted to experience the story, not just see it tweeted out. So they kind of backpedaled on that. They said, wait and see, we'll see what we're gonna do with it. Then the expansion Legion happened. And I could swear that like in the alpha or in the beta of Legion, Neptulon, he showed up at the Shaman Order Hall with a little Ozumat right next to him. Meaning that the thing that they tweeted out, Neptulon being able to free himself. That does seem to be what has happened with the Tide Hunter. That does seem to be the reason why he's able to show up at the Order Hall. We call upon Neptulon, the great Lord of Tides, in the name of Azeroth. Hear our words and answer the call of the Earthen Ring. Shaman of the Earthen Ring. You have called, but I already know the threat we face. The Burning Legion has come. You should make use of the little time you have left, mortals. All is not lost, Tidehunter. If the Elemental Lords unite... Foolish mortals! There is no unity among the Lords of Elements. Hm. Would you bow to Sargeras and be his slave instead? Pathetic. What do you suggest, little orc? Shall I fight the Burning Legion myself? You will not fight alone. The Earthen Ring is with you. And we will gather the other Elemental Lords to our cause. There was a time, long ago, when the Elements fought as one. Perhaps there is still hope. This was, of course, when they united to try and defeat the Old Gods. That didn't work out so well. Regardless, he does agree to aid us, send over his greatest champion. You may remember Hydraxus from that classic questline, the Hydraxian Waterlords. Well now, he's joining us as an Order Hall follower. Hydraxus isn't the only one of Neptulon's champions that we get to work with in Legion, as we also meet Aquaglis. On Falshore Strip on the Broker Shore, a world quest can be activated where we meet up with this water elemental. He tells us that he's been sent over by Neptulon to bring ruin and judgment upon the fell infused fools infesting the area, and we can help him by putting out fell fires and killing fell creatures. Once we completed the world quest, he'll compliment us telling us that we did well for one who is so painfully dry. Helping us clean up the fell corruption in Legion, 
wasn't the last time either that we would hear of the Tidehunter, and we see him again in Battle for Azeroth. In Nashatar, you can speak to Farseer Ori, a member of the Waveblade on Cohen, who tells us that he, unlike the rest of his clan, he was summoned here to do Neptulon's bidding. He isn't the only one here representing the elemental, and we soon find two familiar champions of the Tidehunter, Hydrexus and Aquacles. They've been sent by the Lord to rain justice upon the Naga, although Neptulon is more than capable of dealing out justice himself. The ancient titan magics of the Tidestone, they prevent him from entering Azara's realm, and he stands watch just behind an impenetrable wall of water. As battle for Azeroth draws to a close, we begin to prepare ourselves to enter the Shadowlands, and it seems unlikely that we're going to see a lot of Neptulon in the next expansion. When elements die, they typically end up back at the elemental plane, so the Shadowlands, most likely not a place that Neptulon has to worry about. Anyways, that brings us to the end of the video, so thank you very much for watching everyone, subscribe if you like my videos, leave a like if you enjoyed this one, and until next time, see ya!